Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and this is Raghu. Now if you are somebody who is trying to master all the essential AWS skills to become a data engineer in 2025 then you are in the right place. So in this video I will explain all the important and necessary AWS tools, skills and trends that you need to master to keep up with the competition. And also in case if you are uh, somebody who is watching this video for the very first time then check out the previous video in our playlist which talks about in general what are the skills somebody will expect for a data engineer in 2025. So let's begin. So before we jump into understanding these uh, different AWS tools let's get a clear picture as to what we are going to cover. So to become a data engineer you should have an idea about data ingestion then data storage and big data processing. So we will be covering tools related to, let's say, data storage. For example, we will be talking about data lakes. And then we will be also talking about analyzing the data. So this can be big data processing tools. And we will even talk about real-time data analytics or streaming data analytics and even a bit of machine learning. So in 2025, if you think about our data engineer, uh, he or she will be a combination of all these different aspects starting right from ingesting the data, storing it, big data analytics, streaming, and a bit of machine learning. Now, since we understood this, let's break it down. The first service that I want to talk about is nothing but Amazon S3. S3 is the backbone of any data engineering project because it is the classic data lake in AWS, right? S3 allows you to store data at a very cheaper rate, any kind of data, you get seamless storage, and it very well integrates with other services like Glue and all, right? So one of the things that you need to understand is about S3 and not only just storing the data, for example, archival. So we have a service called Glacier, lifecycle policies, security related to S3. So mastering storage from the point of view of a data lake is S3 and that's really important. Next will be again a data lake and a data warehouse. Now if you are looking for a classic data warehouse in Amazon then the answer is going to be Redshift. It allows you to store structured data and tables and you can query the data but it's proprietary to AWS. And then you have Snowflake which gives you a lot of flexibility over compute and services. And we also have Databricks. So if you combine, you know, Snowflake and Databricks with the storage like S3, you get a highly scalable solution. So understanding the differences between these are important, uh, whether you are sticking with a proprietary solution, something like, uh, you know, Redshift, or you are going for Snowflake or Databricks. So master them and understand the difference between them. And next comes ETL and big data processing. Now, when you think about ETL uh, in cloud, especially in AWS, Glue is the answer. AWS Glue is a complete serverless, highly scalable ETL solution. You have to master that. And when it comes to big data, there are primarily two choices. One is AWS EMR and one is the Databricks. Now, EMR is a very generic big data solution in the sense under the hood, EMR offers the classic Hadoop and you have the Taste, Hive, Spark, everything, right? But if you go to Databricks, it's more or less like a ready-made solution with Apache Spark at its core and with enterprise support and all. And Databricks is also very good at machine learning kind of like use cases. So you have to choose and learn these services, understand their difference, but it's really important that you master Glue and either EMR or Databricks. And when you talk about uh, real-time data analytics, Amazon has its own set solution that is called Amazon Kinesis. Uh, it allows you to consume data in real time, process data in real time, but it's proprietary. On the other hand, if you're looking for, let's say, an open source kind of like a solution, then there is Apache Kafka available as a service. So choose your service depending on the use cases, but make sure that when it comes to streaming, you master any one of them. SageMaker. Even though you are becoming a data engineer, you cannot avoid the impact of AI and machine learning in day-to-day -day life. So you might be responsible for deploying machine learning models, debugging ML pipelines, so Amazon's SageMaker is the go-to tool for running scalable machine learning in the AWS cloud. So having a basic understanding of SageMaker is really important. Some of the other uh, essential tools that you have to master, let's start with orchestration tools. 
So orchestration tools allows you to manage uh, between services within a data pipeline. And one of the AWS specific service is the step functions. So step functions allows you to create a workflow using a visual diagram. And they have this feature which allows you to do retry of executions, error handling, parallel executions and all. And in case if you're already using Apache Air for Airflow for orchestration, then uh, Amazon's managed service for Apache Airflow is something that you have to check out that will help you to easily manage uh, Apache Airflow, the orchestration tool. Uh, another AWS service which is comparatively very new is AWS Bedrock. So Bedrock basically concentrates on this evolving field of generative AI and LLMs. So Bedrock allows you to build uh, custom generative AI applications and as a data engineer, you can integrate uh, Bedrock, your data engineering pipelines, and you can use it for use cases like text generation, summarization, getting insights with the help of generative AI. And some of the other complementary services that you might want to take a look at is one is Amazon's RDS, the Relational Database Service. So this is a fully managed uh, RDBMS service in the cloud, which allows you to choose from a variety of engines like PostgreSQL, MySQL and all. And second is the NoSQL database from Amazon. That's nothing but DynamoDB. Uh, it helps you to store massive amount of data and do quick lookups. And third is this open search from Amazon, which allows you to index and search massive amount of data. Last but not least, three more services. And one is CloudWatch. It allows you to monitor all the services, get the logs, and then you can have actions uh, in real time. And the second one is this Boto3 service, which is Python's SDK for AWS. It allows you to use Python to interact with uh, AWS and you can even design complex workflows using Boto3 and IAM or the Identity and Access Management Service from Amazon. Uh, this allows you to create policies, have users and groups, authentication, authorization, all these admin works at Amazon. So I hope these services are also really useful for you. So having a good understanding of them give you a great edge if you're going to become an AWS data engineer. And what I have covered is probably the most important tools and the list is practically endless. For example, you can argue saying like, okay, what about Athena? What about CICD pipelines? I mean, <laughs> what about serverless computing? Something like Lambda. Yeah, all of them are important, but you know, so to get started or to concentrate, these are the tools. Now, if you really love this video, then consider liking the video, subscribing to our YouTube channel in case if you have not done so and share it with your friends so they can also get benefited. Now, I will come back with another video where we will talk about the essential skills required for an Azure engineer. Till that, bye-bye.